Good morning, St. John family. How we doing? Praise the Lord, everybody. Can we just take a moment to give God some praise? God, we honor you in this place. We serve a mighty God. We serve a big God. We serve a great God. We serve a God that can do anything but fail. And we honor his name this morning. Amen. Would y'all just put your hands together like this and join in? We're simply going to say, Lord, you're mighty. Okay? Hey. Oh. We love you, Jesus. God, we give you the glory. Yeah. So, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Lord, you're mighty.
He's the mighty God we serve. Angels, they bow before Him. Call you holy, 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 holy. What a mighty God we serve. Mighty God we serve. Heaven, heaven and earth adore the mighty God we serve. Sing, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. You're my great defender. I call you mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Yeah. We serve a great and mighty God. And there is nobody like him, and there's no one above him. There's no one beside him. And the Bible says that, our, that his strength is made perfect in our weakness. So it's okay to be weak, because when we're weak, he is strong. And we draw from the strength of the Lord today, because he's good and he's kind. And he will never let us down. He is a good, good father, and he's faithful to his children. And he will always care for his own. Strength, strength like no
and it reaches to me. Say you are my strength. You are my strength. Oh, draw from it, draw from it. Strength like no one. He will be everything that you need. Strength like no other. Reaches. Reaches to me. Reaches to me. Gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Last time, reach it to me. St. John's family. As we take our seats and start this time of prayer, I just want to invite everyone all over the building to bow with me. to give a moment of silence as we think about the horrible events over this past week. Let's take a moment of silence. Father, we do thank you that we can come together as family. We may not be physically touching, but our hearts and minds are in, of one accord. Father, we grieve with those at Robb Elementary and the greater Uvalde community for the 21 lives that were taken this past week. Our hearts are broken. And so God, today, we offer them up to you and we offer our prayers up to you that they will be incense in your nostrils as we present each one of those 21 luminaries who were lost God we pray that you would bring your comfort in some way through your presence. And while we are weeping and grieving of deep concern, God, we do not do it without hope. Hope that you will continue to work, yes, 
that you will work in a country that has more guns than people. That you will work in a country where legislators don't want to change. Help us, Lord, to be part of the solution. That same strength that we just sang about, God, help us not to live with the status quo, to work tirelessly to change the way things are today. Help us, God, to love this community and to love this community through action. Help us to be shining examples of your peace. Persons of the church that will come and help to bring about more understanding of mental health. Persons who will work to change laws. Persons who will help to bring about safety. Father, you are compassionate and gracious slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. God, help us to love in this time of hate. And God is your church. Let us be that example to others. Others all around Texas. Help us to lift up the banner of Jesus. When we walk out these doors, God, you go with us. We ask for your protection today. We ask for your healing today. And Lord, I pray for all those here today. We know that there's hurt in this community. There's pain that has gone forth. in the dealings of life. Help us not to lose hope, but to lean on your strength. Because we know, we are told that you will help us in our time of need. We hold to that promise that you are close to the brokenhearted. And so God, we rest on that today. Rest on the fact that while we are at our weakest, that you are at your strongest. Exchange our weakness for your strength, our confusion for your resolve, our disappointment for your understanding and love. It's in Jesus we pray. Amen. Good morning, family. I know it has been a week, so it does my heart good to see all of you, to have our virtual worshipers uh, tuning in. God's word says that strength and joy is found in his sanctuary, so I'm grateful that we all made it to the right place. So know that we love you and we thank God for you. Um, this is a time where we need to stay connected more than ever. So please know that you can stay connected with this great family. Um, on our website, you can see all the virtual Bible studies that we have. You can also be a part of our support groups on Monday and Tuesday. If you're experiencing grief or any mental challenges, please know that we have a St. John's community that is here for you on Tuesday night. So just look at our website and see all the ways that you can stay connected. And so after I finish speaking, we're going to have our ministers of praise come and minister through music. But I just want to uh, send you a reminder of what we should do as we go forward. And this reminder comes from a dear friend, our young adult community here at St. John's. One of our dear friends, Dorian Price, passed away from leukemia. He was just a few years younger than me, but he was a man of great faith. And he lived every day in spite of his challenges. 
And so I want to encourage us all to live our most expansive life. Amen. Pastor Juanita has a master class that is coming up that you can look on our website to uh, join and be a part of that great experience. But what she reminds us every day is that tomorrow is not promised, but that if we are here, we still have an assignment. We still have a God-given purpose. We still have a reason to be used by God, to use our gifts, to use what God has placed inside of us. So today, take a message from my dear friend Dorian to live your best life. Amen? Amen. Family, I love you, and there is nothing you can do about it. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. To my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah, will I be able to speak at all, I can only imagine, I can only imagine, I can only imagine, when that day comes, and I find myself, Standing in the sun, I can only imagine when all I would do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine, yeah. I can only imagine. To my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah, will I be able to speak at all, I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine. forever forever worship you I can only imagine 
Can we show our ministers of praise some more love for that on-time message? Very powerful message. I love them dearly. Some of you do not know, but they've been coming every Sunday at 8 o'clock a.m. to pray for you all, to pray for this service. So I'm grateful for their ministry. Family, it's now time for offering. Our time to get excited and think about this great God that we, that we serve, this great God that loves us. You all know the great work that we're doing, and if you need to catch up on what we're doing, you can always go to our website, go to our Bread of Life website. There's so many ways that you can serve. There's so many ways that you can be the hands and feet of Jesus. But I'm grateful that I get to serve at the best church in the world, that we are now going on almost 30 years of ministry. And that is indeed a blessing to still have our doors open, to still be the love, to still serve and just shower people with love and be about community. And so know that we couldn't do this great work without all of you. So there is many ways that you can give. You can give online at stjohnsdowntown.org. You can use this QR code and scan it with your phone. You can also use my favorite cash app, but just make sure you put the dollar sign, St. John's Downtown. Or you can mail in your gifts at 2019 Crawford, Houston, Texas, 77002. But just know that we are so grateful for you. Know that we're claiming that the best is yet to come, that we still have more work to do, and we just hope that you continue to join us for the ride. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this beautiful day, God. We thank you that the sun is not only shining out on the outside, but your light is shining right here on the inside. That even in the midst of everything that we've been going through, everything that we've seen on the news, that we can still say that you are a God that is still faithful. You are a God that loves us. You are a God that sees us and knows us, God. So in this moment where we are giving back to you, we recognize that everything that we have belongs to you, God. And so I pray that you will continue to bless us individually. I pray that you will continue to bless this church, bless the community, and those we are called to serve. God, your grace has been sufficient. Your grace has been more than enough. And we are so grateful that we are still here, that our doors are still open so that we can be a vessel, so that we can be used by you. So we pray that you will continue to bless us and touch this offering today, God. We give you all the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Let us all say amen. What then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? God, we honor your name, and we thank you for being our rescuer. Thank you for being our healer, our provider, a strong tower. We know we can be saved. You have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. And I'm never going back. If you know that, would you sing that out? You have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. And I'm never going back. So my response. for that this morning you have
come back to say thank you. And I'm never going back. I remember when it was all downhill. You have rescued my You have rescued my You have rescued my life. You have rescued my life.
Hallelujah. Yeah. Sing it out. You're my redeemer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One last time. My response. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes. Sounds like heaven in the room. You're my redeemer. Yeah. Hallelujah. One last time, it feels like heaven in the room. My response is hallelujah. hallelujah. It feels like heaven. You're my redeemer. Hallelujah. 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 How will you respond? How do we respond to such a king? How do we respond to such a great God that gives us new mercies every morning? Goodness and mercy follows us for the rest of our lives. How do we respond? What do we say to these things? If God be for us, he's more than the world against us. And we will always respond with praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How good and how pleasant it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity to be able to praise and celebrate the God in whose image we have been created to know this morning that God has called us for such a time as this that no matter what is happening in the world around us that the God that we serve that he is in control. There's a scripture in the book of 1 Kings where after the greatest victory of his ministry life, Elijah has just defeated Jezebel and 400 prophets. And then the Bible says that he runs for his life. And as he runs for his life, he finds himself in a cave. And in that cave, the Bible says that there was a tremendous earthquake. How many of you know that things are breaking all around us? Come on, somebody. But the Bible said that even in the midst of the earthquake, that, that God was not there. Then there was a violent wind, so violent that it broke the rocks in pieces. But God was not in the wind. And then the Bible said that was fire. How many of you feel like the heat has been turned up around us? And we don't even recognize the times in which we live. But the Bible said that God was not in the fire. And then there was a still, small voice. How many of you know that sometimes we have to be still long enough, no matter what's happening around us, to hear the still, small voice of God? Because whether we believe it or not, in these tumultuous times in which we live, God is at work. Even when we cannot see him, God is at work. And as we prepare our hearts for the word of God this morning, we simply say, speak, Lord Jesus. Every head bowed, every heart humble, every eye closed, spirit of the living God. Fall afresh upon us in this place as we are waiting and anticipating to hear from you amidst all of the noise that we hear going on around us we pray that you would speak like you've never spoken before give us a rhema word give us an express word give us a right now word lord that we might not only hear but that we might move in the direction of your voice and make a dip and a difference in the world in which we live. Father, we pray for our pastors this morning that you would refresh Rudy and Juanita in the midst of 30 years of pouring their lives out into this place and the community that we are called to serve. We pray this morning that you would just be with them, O oh God. 
encourage their hearts and give them to know that even as they prepare to close out this aspect of their mission and ministry that the best is yet to come that eyes have not seen that ears have not heard neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that you have prepared for those who love you oh God we know that they love you with all of their hearts and so father have your way and then God we pray for our campus pastor Lord, as she is about to be commissioned a provisional elder in the United Methodist Church. God, as she has faithfully served in this place among this people, we thank you for the elevation of her life, her mission, and her ministry. And we know, God, that for Pastor Tiffany Chandler, that the best truly is yet to come. And so we give you honor and praise as we ask all of these things in the name of Jesus the Christ and all of the people of God said amen, amen and amen. Come on, put those hands together and give our great God some praise. Give God some praise for our worship leader, our praise team today. It is a blessing to be here on this morning and uh, anybody who knows me knows that I practice the three B's. Be brief, be prepared, and then be seated. And so I'm not going to be long today. Our scripture this morning is a very familiar passage of scripture as we find ourselves in our series from this day forward. From this day forward, I will be the church. It is in the gospel according to Matthew 16, 13 through 18. We find these words. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the son of man is? And they replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon of Jonah. For flesh and blood have not revealed us to you, but my father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter and on this rock, I will build my church. and The gates of hell will not prevail against it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated in the presence of God. The setting for this particular scripture takes place in a place called Caesarea Philippi. It is in this particular place that a temple had been built to honor Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus. And maybe Jesus in his mind is wondering, questioning why a mortal man had a temple built to honor himself. And so Jesus posed his disciples about who people are saying that he is. And they threw out the usual answers. John the Baptist maybe come back from the dead. Elijah or one of the prophets, Jeremiah. And then Jesus takes it a step further and he asks a fundamental question that, that all of us as believers need to know and need to ask ourselves in the time in which we live. But Jesus says, who do you say that I, the Son of Man, is? It really doesn't matter about popular opinion. It really doesn't matter what the world says that Jesus is. What's fundamentally true this morning is that each of us in our own right and in our relationship with God need to know that Jesus is the Son of the living God. He is the Messiah sent down from heaven. Jesus is the fundamental answer for all that we need in this life. Jesus reveals to Simon Peter that you didn't get this in a seminary. You didn't get this out of a textbook. Nobody told you, but my Father which is in heaven has revealed to you who I am. And from this day forward, the disciples determined that they would be the church. My brothers and sisters, I want to say this morning that when the pages of history are printed and run, what on them will they say that we have done, the church? What roles in life will we have paved? What contributions will we have made the church? 
As we erect our churches and build monuments, we remember the purpose for which we are sent, the church. For the souls of men which are second to none, for for this cause God built his church. He built this church on the solid foundation based on Peter's affirmation. What shall we do? What shall we say that we might persuade men to obey the voice of the Lord as he extends the call to Christian service, everyone and all? My brothers and sisters, in this hour and in this season, we must acclaim our people for past deeds done. Encourage them to continue to run in the face of adversity, run ahead, remembering what the scripture has said, that the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong. No, no, no. But to the ones who run on and on and on and on and on. We must find ourselves in this hour and in this season being the church. Where do I start this morning? The shooting at a Taiwanese Presbyterian church in California which left one dead and five wounded. The Buffalo shooting at Topps Supermarket where 10 innocent people of African descent lost their lives to senseless gun violence related to a doctrine called replacement theory. Or most recently, as our brother so eloquently prayed this morning, Rob Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas, where as many as 19 innocent children are dead and two adults again due to senseless gun violence in our nation. In the words of the late Marvin Gaye, it makes you want to holler, throw up both your hands. How do we make sense of the world that we live in? Post-COVID-19, or as we continue to see present COVID with new strands seeming to pop up every other week, how are we as believers to keep in perspective the number of lives that have been lost in the last 60 plus days as we watch Russia invade Ukraine with demonic devastation, thousands of lives lost while the world stood by and did nothing but supply weapons, albeit a little too late. Every day, my brothers and sisters, we are confronted with the reality that we live in a fallen world. And it's falling deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into chaos and confusion every single day. I don't want to depress anybody this morning, but this is the reality of the world that we live in. The truth is that history has a way of repeating itself. The massacre of the innocents has been going on for a very long time. In the book of Genesis, Pharaoh sends out a decree that all male children should be put to death. Were it not for the grace of God and the providence of God, a Moses who wrote Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, a stellar life in the history of the Hebrew people, a Moses would never have been born to lead the children of Egypt out of Egyptian bondage. The prophet Jeremiah prophesied in Jeremiah 31 and 15, that Rachel is weeping for her children and cannot be comforted, cannot be consoled because they are gone. They are not. Can I go a step further this morning and paint a picture of a climate here in America which fuels hate? Fox News spews venom so vile that people who are already on the edge are acting out in senseless taking of innocent lives. It's a trick of the enemy. It's the lies of the enemy. And it seems that everywhere that we can be divided in this country, we are. The United States of America is the divided states of America. 
We are divided racially. We are divided ethnically. We are divided politically. We are divided across social economic lines. And it seems that the very fabric of who we are supposed to be as a society is unraveling before our very eyes. Can I tell you this morning that things are probably going to get worse before they get better? But in spite of the hopelessness and the despair that we see going on around us, I want you to put your hands together because there is good news from glory this morning. The God that we serve, he is still in control. Jesus said in John 16 and 33, I have said these things to you. That in me you might have peace. Come on somebody. That in me, not in the world, not in your situation, not in your circumstances, but in me you might have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. It seems like hell is breaking loose around us. In the world you will have tribulation. But Jesus said, be of good courage because I have overcome the world. Take a moment this morning while we are in the presence of God to breathe in the peace of Jesus Christ. God's peace this morning is is not the absence of your problems. That's not what real peace is. God's peace is not the absence of our problems, but, but the peace of God is his ability to keep us in the midst of our problems. That when all hell is breaking loose around us, we can still say, God, I trust you. God, I stand on the truth of who you are. I stand on the truth of your word. The same peace that allowed David to say at one of the most trying times of his life, when all hell was breaking loose, David was still able to say that I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Come hell or high water, my praise is my protest. I don't care what the enemy throws at me, my praise is my protest. I am going to serve God with all my heart. This is the attitude that God calls for us to have even in the midst of troubled times. We cannot lose our hope. We cannot lose our songs of praise. We cannot lose our songs of celebration. And so Paul writes in Philippians 4 and 4 to the church then, and then he writes to us, Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. I don't care what's happening in your life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I say rejoice. But I want you to know this morning, Jason, that that, that Paul does not leave us there. He takes it a step further and reminds us in the sixth verse of the same chapter, do not be anxious about anything. Come on, somebody. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything By prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Do not allow your anxiety to annul your anointing. Can I say that again? Do not allow your anxiety to annul the anointing that God has upon your life. 1 John 4 and 4 says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. This is what God promises to the believer who can praise through their situation and their circumstance. Then verse number 7 of the same chapter, and the peace of God. And And the peace, hey, shalom, and the peace of God. What is the peace of God? The peace of God is the unruffled serenity 
of the infinitely happy God. It is the eternal composure of the absolutely well contented with God. Let me tell you this morning, in other words, God is not moved by our mess. God is not moved by our mess. He's not moved by the situations and the circumstances that are going on in your life. I want to tell you this morning that if we are going to trust God in this hour and in this season, if we're going to trust God, then quit tripping. Come on, somebody. If you're going to trust God, quit tripping. Because if you're going to worry, don't pray. But if you're going to pray, don't worry. Hey, and the peace, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. How is she able to maintain, maintain her composure in the midst of all that she, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds. This peace, this joy, this contentment. That I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. I wish I had two believers this morning who could agree with me. Because if one can put a thousand to a fight, then two ten thousand. From this day forward, I am going to be the church. A few years ago, God gave me an acronym for the word church, and that acronym is called HEARUS. Urgently reaching Christ harvest. As followers of Jesus Christ, we must recognize that we have a calling upon our life. We are called to make new disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And so when we leave here today, we must recognize that we have a calling upon our life. Blind Bartimaeus sat by the roadside begging for his food every day until one day Jesus came by. And Jesus said, Bartimaeus, and they say, he's calling you. He threw off what represented his blindness. And he followed Jesus in the way. And his life was never the same. We must recognize that in spite of all that is going on around us, that he has called us. Many are called, but few are chosen. God has not only called us, but he has chosen us for this hour and this season. Come on, somebody. Dr. Walter Brueggemann in his book, The Prophetic Imagination, says that the task of prophetic ministry is to nurture, to nourish, to evoke a consciousness and perception alternative to the consciousness and perception of the dominant culture around us. We must understand this morning that we have been called by God to invade the culture, and no matter what they do, we must stand on the promises of God. We must position ourselves to come to church, not only come to church, but as we come to church, we must be prepared to hear from God every single time we come. So not only are we called, but we are to hear. But James takes it a step further. James says, be not hearers of the word only, but doers also. You see, everybody want to everybody wanna hallelujah, but sometimes you need to do the hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. yeah, everybody can hallelujah, but every once in a while, we need to find ourselves leaving the church, going out into society, and sharing with somebody the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And there must be a sense of urgency. Jesus said that I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, for the night comes when no man can work. Church, we must have a sense of urgency about confronting the ills of our society. We must have a sense of urgency of going down to the George R. Brown Convention Center and confronting those who said that it's all right to sell an AK, an AR-47, an AK rifle. Come on, somebody, a weapon of mass destruction to an 18-year-old. Come on, somebody. We must stand on the front line with a sense of urgency and tell somebody about Jesus Christ. Paul hears urgently reaching. One day Jesus was with his disciples and he said to them, look out on the fields, they are white to harvest. When you see an 18 year old walk into a supermarket with hate in his heart and take the lives of 10 innocent people, the harvest truly is plenteous. 
when we see the rise of hate that we see in the climate in which we live, we must have a sense of urgency about reaching those who have not come to know him. So Jesus said, look out on the fields, they're white to harvest. Jesus said, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the labors are few. Pray that the Lord of the harvest would send forth labors into the vineyard to work. Church, we must leave here today with a sense of knowing that we must confront people with the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. But when he rose from the dead, come on somebody with all power in heaven and in earth. One day he's coming back with a glorious day. From this day forward, I will acknowledge that I have a calling upon my life. From this day forward, I'm going to join a Bible study. From this day forward, I'm going to put my head in the book so that God can speak to me so that I might make a difference in the world in which we live. From this day forward, I'm going to put running in my feet and clapping in my hands. From this day forward, I will live with a sense of urgency telling people about Christ. As I close, how to reach the masses. Men of every birth. For an answer, Jesus gave the key. He said that if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Church, we got to lift up Jesus. We got to lift him up in the marketplace. We got to lift him up in the classroom. We got to lift him up in our homes. We got to lift him up in the neighborhood. But we got to find ourselves lifting up Jesus. I want to share with you this morning that God has given every one of us an opportunity this morning to be the church. To recognize that I am a child of the King. And that God has invested within me all that I need to represent Him in this faith community. There might be someone this morning who does not know Jesus as your personal Savior. The greatest decision that you'll ever make in life is to say, God, I want to become a part of your church. I want to be called. I want to hear. I want to be urgent. I want to have a sense of mission. I want to have a sense of purpose. And if that's you today, it's so easy. All you got to do is invite him into your heart and say, Father, come and live in me and use me and make my life what you would have it to be. And if you've made that decision today, all you got to do is contact us here at the church and someone will invite you. Someone will indoctrinate you. Someone will help you to get to know Jesus. But from this day forward, I am going to be the church. God bless you. to join to this number on the screen or you can 
join on our website. We would love to have you a part of this great family. And you know how we like to end it. We can do all things.